Hi, I'm Bobby England, and this is my homemade gasifier. This is a small, nozzle restricted hearth, pressurized downdraft gasifier, which I'll explain in a moment. Gasifiers were used extensively during World War II in Europe. Over a million were made due to gas shortages during World War II. Only six were documented in the U.S. and two in Canada. But these same units produced during World War II are still in use in Africa, India, South America, and other areas that have a shortage of liquid fuel. The operation, theoretically, of a downdraft gasifier is very simple. This information is from the Handbook of Biomass Downdraft Gasifier Engine Systems, long name, by the Solar Energy Research Institute of Colorado in 1988. They operate by limiting oxygen supply to a normal combustion reaction. You can see it operating right here. I've just emptied the tube from last night's combustion and laid it out in order of where it was. <clears throat> the unburned wood enters the hopper, this cylinder here, and goes down into an area we have these air nozzles which with we restrict the oxygen intake. The heat from this combustion, regular combustion, drives pyrolysis. The wood produces tar, water vapor, and some volatiles. The volatiles are in turn combusted here. This is a standard combustion. Carbon and oxygen gives you carbon dioxide and heat. The heat drives the pyrolysis and it drives this reduction reaction. You run out of oxygen by here. This is all still very hot, but it's not burning. Reduction indicates that carbon and carbon dioxide with heat added will make two carbon monoxide, which is flammable, and carbon and water with enough heat added gives you carbon monoxide and hydrogen, which is very flammable. All this is reduction zone right here. Ash falls through here, gas passes out there. This is where we control the air intake. This type of gasifier is an ember type gasifier. It's a downdraft gasifier, which means that air burns the pyrolyzing biomass before the charcoal. The combustion is here, where the air is. The charcoal is not burning. This actually produces most of the flammable gas that comes out of it, and it burns 99% of the tar. Therefore, there's less than 1% condensable oils and tars in the gas produced, which is why I selected it. FEMA gasifier require extensive gas cleaning equipment, reducing the efficiency of the unit, and increasing the overall size of the producer. It's a nozzle and restricted hearth gasifier because it uses three quarter inch nozzles down here to deliver the flow inside the units. And a restricted hearth is a plate in the bottom with a hole in the middle of it so that all the air has to flow through the zone of hot char in this gas reduction zone. Also, the flat plate model, model that I chose to use gathers a cone of ash here that serves as a high-quality self-repairing insulation. Some of the charcoal is also reduced. This white pine ultimately produces less than 3% ash. ash. This is a pressurized unit, meaning that airflow is controlled through a compressor and introduced here in this manifold. The hopper needs to be airtight to about 10 PSI but it needs to be not airtight. It needs to pop off at above 20 PSI as a safety mechanism. You may see that if we have an overpressure unit. This carburetor allows a venturi effect to draw air as the gas passes through this larger tube and a nozzle inside so that we mix a little bit of oxygen with our flammable gas to burn it here in our burner. Now we're going to start the when doing this kind of thing, you always want to make sure to get this. You want gloves, you want safety goggles, you want a fire extinguisher. Uh, you're going to do it in a well-ventilated area because you're going to produce carbon monoxide, which you obviously don't want to breathe. You probably want Sioux City sarsaparilla or tea or something. On the material preparation, you can see the materials I've produced right here. What we've got is some half and three quarter inch pelletized wood. It's just sticks I cut into little tiny dowels. And we've got these three quarter inch white pine cubes. This is your preferred material right there. You don't want to use any kind of long sticks. Any kind of pieces you cut that have chunks and bits falling off of them. 
Don't use any bark. Don't use any odd sides, construction materials, and obviously don't put big sticks in it. These things will get caught up in your hopper, and then your, your reaction will not proceed. When we start this thing, we open the hopper. I prepared some charcoal here. I had a charcoal scooper. You see my charcoal scooper, hun? Uh -uh. Me either. I prepared some charcoal here, which we're going to hopefully carefully charge the bottom of the hopper. This is what lights the actual reaction. We put a little bit of starting material in on top of that. We'll connect our air hose. Definitely got combustion going in the chamber. We want to get to about six or eight hundred degrees to get pyrolysis to proceed. And give us most of those good gases we want. And you can see now the hydrogen and carbon monoxide burning the carburetor to produce a clean water vapor and carbon dioxide that can fuel a small engine. And that's how an ember type, very small, nozzle unrestricted hearth, pressurized gasifier can be built at home in not very much time. It only cost $18 to build this unit. That's all. <laughs>